What's up, Rage and Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You're watching a Marvel edition of the Rage and Nation show. This is just the web series where we're talking about all things that matter to me in the world of Marvel films. This is episode number 23, and we got a lot to talk about in this episode because a lot of new developments have been going on. Let's start off by talking about X Men Apocalypse. And what's been going on is that Simon Kinberg, the writer for X Men Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, decided to drop some news tidbits about. X-Men Apocalypse. And what he said specifically is that X-Men Apocalypse takes place 10 years after the events of X-Men Days of Future Past, specifically 1983. Well, what does that mean for the movie? Well, first of all, 1983, that's an event, or rather that's a year that is already passed. So what they, they're, gonna, they're probably going to do is they're probably going to add events, like real life true events that actually happen in real life into the story into a fictional story adding real life events into a fictional story and in some ways changing or, or rather enhancing what we know about what happened in history now that's really cool I like the way that they integrate that sort of thing into the story with X-Men Days of Future Past what that also suggests is that the main cast of X-Men Apocalypse is going to be more of the newer cast members or rather the younger cast members uh, uh, such as the X-Men First Class characters. Obviously, young Magneto, young Professor X, uh, Beast, uh, uh, a Mystique played by Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, maybe not Wolverine. I guess they could add Wolverine, but they're probably going to give him a smaller part this time around. But that's what's going to happen. So X-Men Apocalypse takes place in 1983. So that's pretty exciting. Now moving on, let's take about, talk about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And The Amazing Spider-Man 2 now has a Blu-ray release date. It is going to be available for digital download, digital HD download on August 5th and Blu-ray and DVD home video release on August 19th. Now I've only seen details for the standard edition of the Blu-ray. I haven't seen any deluxe editions or the 3D edition. So I'm very curious about what, why that isn't happening. Is it because that, um, you know, it didn't do as amazing as, as it could have done. Uh, another thing uh, is that um, this is the quickest turnaround from theatrical release to home video release. So I don't know, that could suggest something. But anyways, uh, it's available uh, for home video release on August 19th. Moving on, we got to talk about what's going on with the third installment of Captain America, which currently doesn't have a title right now. But uh, Frank Grillo was actually in an interview recently. If you don't know who he plays, he plays Brock Rumlow. And I got to say that Frank Grillo is starting to become one of my favorite actors. I love this perform performance in The Grey and also in um, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the third installment. Now, he didn't necessarily confirm that he was actually going to be in it. But we know what happened in the events of Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, so therefore, I hope uh, he's returning to play Crossbones. And he felt very optimistic about it in the interviews. So most likely, we're going to see him in cro as Crossbones in the third installment. That's going to be really exciting, all right, to see another villain uh, come back. All right, so very, very cool. Now let's talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Not a whole lot of big news, except for the fact that there's a new international trailer that is out for Guardians of the Galaxy, which is actually very different from what we've seen previously. The, the previous trailers and the TV spots brought in a lot of humor and it really suggested the tone, the comedic tone of the film. This time around, we're getting to know the characters. So check out that trailer, that international trailer rather. I'm posting it on the description box below for you to check out. Now, moving on, let's talk about Avengers Age of Ultra. And you know what? I can't really say much about it just because there's some minor spoilerific details. But if you head over to the link I'm going to provide in the description box below, Collider.com actually did uh, did a bit of um, a relay of some in, uh, some information from DrowBlow.com, and uh, what they mentioned is some changes to uh, some characters' costumes. I'm not gonna say what they are. If you wanna know about them, you can click the link in the description box below. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is Ant-Man. Now, we already know what's going on with Ant-Man and that is that they changed directors, um, uh, which is really quite disappointing. But the new development is really about uh, the villain that's going to be going up against Ant-Man. And right now, there's no there's no real um, uh, official confirmed uh, uh, official confirmation of who the villain is going to be, but uh, what uh, what um, what is 
actually rumored is that Ant-Man is going to go up against Darren Cross, who is going to be played by Corey Stoll. And what he is, is the founder of Cross Technological Enterprises, also known as CTE. And what Darren Cross is all about is that um, he is, well, not, not only is he the founder of Cross Technological Enterprises, is that, uh, but he also has a bit of a rare heart condition. And what he had to do is he had to make some advances, technological advances to his own system like his, his 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 immune system which eventually gave him superhuman abilities but what's very interesting about the fact that he's going to be a villain is that it's possible that Patrick Wilson will be playing William Cross who is his cousin and William Cross is of course Crossfire the other villain now, there's no word on whether Crossfire is going to show up in this installment of Ant-Man or maybe a future sequel of Ant-Man, but at least the character of William Cross, William Cross uh, played by Patrick Wilson, is going to be in there. So that is the latest development with Ant-Man, and I don't know if that was in the original script from, um, from, from, from Edgar Wright, or is, or is it in the new script, all right? But anyways... We now have a villain for Ant-Man, and that's all very exciting. Anyways, that's all i got to say in this video and this, uh, this, this update of the Marvel edition of the Rage of Nations show. There's a lot of stuff going on, obviously, and we're going to have more updates for you guys in episode 24. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage of Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, at Rage of Nation. My name is Alex Yu. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Seven and made 50 million. Uh, I mean, we're talking domestically, okay? Uh, Resident Evil Afterlife came out in 2010 and made 60 million, and Resident Evil 